the top. Choose the colors you want for each thing. And so what's going to happen on this page is we're going to look at four different families of angles. And these will form the trigonometry or the unit circle that you'll have to have memorized and be able to figure out a bunch of things without a calculator. Now, the axis family is the easiest. So on the unit circle, the places where, wow, it's going to bug me that it's off. Well, maybe we just have to leave it. Oh, there we go. The places where the unit circle hits the axis form the axis family. And since the unit circle has a radius of 1, if you went one to the right but didn't go up, does it make sense that you could label this point as one comma zero? If you just went straight up one unit, you could label this point as zero comma one, this point as negative one zero, and this point down here as zero negative one. In standard position, this first point starts at zero degrees. Does that make sense? This point at the top in standard position would be 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. And all the way around, this will be back at 360 degrees. So in radians, This would be zero radians. Now, the 90 degrees you might not be very good at yet, but does it make sense that if all the way around is 2 pi, that halfway around 180 degrees is pi, and then 90 degrees would be half of 180 degrees, so 90 degrees pi over 2. And if this is 1 pi over 2 and this is 2 pi over 2, this makes this. 3 pi over 2. And what this allows us to do is our first set of trig evaluations without a calculator. I can ask you, Izzy, pick a volunteer. You can pick yourself if you want to, but pick a volunteer that's going to say what sine of 180 degrees is. Brandon. Okay? Well, look. This is how easy it is. You know where 180 degrees is. On the unit circle, you have this point. One of our big ideas is the coordinates are cos theta comma sine theta. So if I say sine of 180 degrees, you go to 180 degrees, which coordinate are you going to look at for sine? The y coordinate. So sine of 180 degrees is 0. Okay, you got to pick the next volunteer. I want the next volunteer to tell me what cos of 3 pi over 2 radians is. Josh, cos of 3 pi over 2. Okay. So we're going to go, okay, coordinates, big idea is the coordinates are cos comma sine. So if I told you the angle is 3 pi over 2, you're down here, go to the coordinates. Is cos the x coordinate or the y coordinate? It's the x coordinate. So cos of 3 pi over 2 will be 0. Okay? Sine of 90 degrees. Josh, who's our next volunteer? Sam. <laughs> Sam, what is 
What did, which one did I say? Sine of 90 degrees. One. Perfect. It's got this. Okay? So our coordinates tell us how to do trig of certain things without our calculator. Okay? Our next big idea is that tangent is sine over cos. Sine is the y coordinate, cos is the x coordinate. So I can go to zero degrees here. I'm going to write tan of zero is equal to, and if sine is zero and cos is one, I would have zero over one, which is zero. Same thing over here at tan of pi would be zero over negative one, which is zero. Now, unfortunately, at the top, when you try to do tan of pi over 2 or tan of 90 degrees, you would get 1 divided by 0, and you're not allowed to divide by 0. So we're going to say this is undefined. And same thing down here, tan of 3 pi over 2. is undefined. This is our first family. In our first family, you can now do sine, cos, and tan of 90, 180, 270, 360 in degrees, or 0 pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2 in radians. Sam, pick a volunteer. What is cos of pi? Cos of pi, negative 1, okay? So we are using the big idea and the unit circle. Next family, everybody done this one? Is the 45 degree family. Oh, I go back one sec. So in this space that you have right here, we're going to write special triangle for 45 degrees. If I make a right angle triangle and I make one of the angles 45 degrees, what can you tell me? about the other angles in this triangle. If one of the angles is 45 degrees, what's the other angle? 45 as well. And what kind of triangle is this? It, it's a right angle, but there's also a name when both angles are the same. Do you remember? Isosceles. Who? It's on fire today. Yeah, <laughs> you say yeah, it's got to be right today, right? The isosceles triangle, and what is unique about an isosceles triangle is these two sides and these two angles are the same. So this side is equal to this side. In mathematics, when sides are equal on a triangle, we sometimes put a little dash on there to say that they're equal. Which allows me to do the following. I can put any number I want for this side. If I put this side as 2, then this side is 2. If I put this side as 1, then this side would be 1. If I put both of those sides to be 1, could you tell me the hypotenuse? Yeah. Right? Have we used our calculator yet? No. But once I draw that triangle, I can tell what sine of 45 degrees is. Right? According to the definition of sine, it would be the opposite of our hypotenuse. 1 over the square root of 2. Do you remember rationalizing? So we could write this as root 2 over 2. Would you agree that cos of 45 would be exactly the same because it's adjacent over hypotenuse? So it's also root 2 over 2. And tan of 45, 1 over 1, would just be 1. We did that all without our calculator. 
Now, what does this mean for our unit circle? Here are our points. We now know, since this is 45, and I was doing degrees in blue, since that angle is 45 degrees, the coordinates then would be cos theta, comma sine theta. And we know those coordinates from this special triangle. Over here, we now know these coordinates. Can you see that if I drew a triangle down with the same reference angle of 45 degrees, it would be the exact same triangle. The height of this point is exactly the same. But the x-coordinate now is going to the left. My x-coordinate would be negative. My y-coordinate would be positive. In quadrant three, you're still going the same d distance down, but now both of them would be negative. And in quadrant four, the x part would be positive, and the y part, because you're going down, would have a negative coordinate. I'm going to give you a 20 second head start. Label the other angles that are part of the 45 degree family. That means they all have a reference angle of 45 degrees. So this one's 45. What's the one in quadrant two? What's the one in quadrant three? What's the one in quadrant four? 20 second head start. Did you beat me? Okay. So if your reference angle is 45 degrees, here you would do 180 minus 45. Here you would do 180 plus 45. Here you would do 360 minus 45. Those are the ones in degrees. Now we do the same thing in radians. That's pi over 4. 30 seconds head start this time. How did you do? Did you get 3 pi on 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi on 4? How did I get that? That's a good question, right? So if you got 135 by doing 180 minus 45, agreed, in radians, Instead of 180, you would do pi. Instead of 45, you would do pi over 4. But then you have to know how you subtract fractions. In order to subtract fractions, what's the main rule for subtracting fractions? You need denominator. common denominator. So I'm going to change my pi to 4 pi over 4, because that's the same as pi. If you have 4 pi minus 1 pi, does it make sense you would get 3 pi over 4? Can you see how that works nicely for quadrant 3? 4 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4 would give me 5 pi over 4. And for the 360, right, I did 360 minus 45 to get 315. I would do 2 pi minus pi over 4, but I need a common denominator. 
Oh, look at this. So if I put it over 4, this would be? Very nice. If I change that 2 into an 8. And then 8 pi over 4 is minus 1 pi over 4 would give us 7 pi over 4. Oh, where were we at? M Mira, you were the last volunteer. So now I'm going to ask someone to do cos of 5 pi over 4. Who's the volunteer going to be? Cat. Cos of 5 pi over 4. Perfect. How about sine of 135 degrees? Kat, who are you picking? Eliza. Square root of 2 over 2. Because sine is the y coordinate, so it's going to be positive because it's in quadrant 2. So it's the same idea as before. Cos is the x coordinate, sine is the y coordinate. If you know the angle, like if I asked what's cos of 3 pi over 4, I would go to my coordinate, and cos would be the x coordinate, and I would get negative root 2 over 2. Now, from our special triangle, we know that tan of 45 degrees or tan of pi over 4 is equal to 1. What is tan of 3 pi over 4? Well, it's also going to be the same value of 1, but the question is, is it going to be positive 1 or negative 1? And how do you know? Well, you could use the big idea. Tan is sine over cos. Does it make sense if I took root 2 over 2 and divided by root 2 over 2? I would get 1. Here... If I took root 2 over 2 and divided by negative root 2 over 2, I would get negative 1. But you can also use your cast rule. Should tan be positive or negative in quadrant 2? Negative. Here in quadrant 3, what's tan of 5 pi over 4? Positive 1. And tan of 7 pi over 4? Negative 1. And this is our 45 degree family. Yes. The original pi over 4 is because 45 degrees and pi over 4 are the same. You know they're the same because once around the circle is 2 pi radians, which was 360 degrees. So pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. And I'm going to write radians here just so you don't think that pi, pi is still 3.14. 3.14 radians is 180 degrees. What would you have to divide 180 by to get 45? I'd have to divide by 4. So 45 degrees is pi over 4. I just took some of the time out and, and told you already as we get to the next family, which is the 30 degree family, that can you see that 180 divided by 6 is 30? So pi divided by 6 is the same as 30 degrees. Pi over 6 radians is 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you go backwards. Maybe, maybe. All right, the 30 degree angle. Now, for the 45 degree angle, we made, and I think there's a good amount of space right here, but I'll write it up here. Special triangle for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. And the reason I say and 60 degrees is because if I make a right angle triangle, and I make one angle 30 degrees, 
Does it make sense that the other angle will be 60 degrees? Oh, now I'm going to ask your triangle definition memory. Does anyone know what this kind of triangle, I mean, it's, besides being a right triangle, what do you call a triangle where all the angles are different and all the sides are different? No, it's not that cute. <laughs> it is called a scalene triangle. I think they came up with that name because it's really the name for all the not special triangles in the world. And they felt not special, so we're like, well, we'll give you a name. And the name of the not special triangles is scalene. And unlike isosceles, they're like, ooh, we got two angles the same and two sides the same. And equilateral, we're like all the same. Scalene triangles are not special in any way. So, right now we're stuck because we can't do any math with this scalene triangle. So I have a story to tell you about this scalene triangle. One day, I'm just walking down the street, feeling all scalene, not special at all, and ran into another exactly the same Scalene triangle, and it was like, hi, how are you? Not special. How are you? Not special. And they were feeling kind of not special, so they're like, well, you want to hang out? And I said, okay. So the other scalene triangle decided, also not special, with 30 degrees here and 60 degrees here, they got together. But when they got together, something special happened. When I put both of those together, what do I get? This is your chance. You almost had it yesterday. No! Oh! It's the equilateral one. Do you see that putting them together makes all 60 degrees? And so if they're all 60 degrees, that means that if you know one side, you know all the sides. So I could put... If I put five here, then it would be five here and five on the bottom. If I put six, it would be six and six. You can choose any number you want. I'm going to choose two. If this is two, then this would be two. And on the bottom, does that make sense? And now we can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared for the little tiny black triangle. 1 squared plus what squared equals 2 squared? This is going to be the square root of 3. Oh, it's like a poem almost. It rhymed. Nice. And then from this triangle, you now know sine of 30 degrees, cos of 30 degrees, and tan of 30 degrees. Because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, this will be 1 over 2. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, square root of 3 over 2. And tan is opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over the square root of 3. And I'm going to rationalize the denominator again and write this as the square root of 3 over 3. Similarly, we can also do sine of 60 degrees, cos of 60 degrees, and tan of 60 degrees. Sine of 60 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 on 2, cos. 1 half, and tan, root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. So what does this let us do for the 30 degree family? The 30 degree family is when you have a reference angle of 30 degrees. You can say what this point is. Right? Cos, root 3 over 2. Sine, one-half. Then when you go over here, 
Now you're going in the negative direction, so it's negative root 3 on 2. And up, still positive 1 half. Down here, you're going negative direction. And down. And over here, positive. And down, negative. So our special triangle, let us label those points. Twenty-second head start to finish the degrees. For the third degree family. Right. How did you do? Did you beat me? Did you get 150 degrees, 210 degrees, and 330 degrees? All right. Now the radians, pi over 6. Can you use the same strategy we used last time? 20 seconds. Did you get 5 pi on 6, 7 pi on 6, and 11? Again, for pi, I would think, oh, pi is 6 pi over 6. Minus 1 pi over 6 would give me 5. Plus 1 pi over 6 would give me 7. And 2 pi is the same as 12 pi over 6. And 12 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6 would give me 11 pi over 6. And now we can do tan. Tan of pi over 6, root 3 over 3. In quadrant 2, tan of 5 pi over 6, negative root 3 over 3. Quadrant 3, tan of 7 pi over 6, positive root 3 over 3, and in quadrant 4, tan of 11 pi over 6 would be negative root 3 over 3. Okay, where did we end volunteer-wise? Eliza? Okay, Eliza's going to tell, um, pick someone to do cos of 11 pi over 6. Honor. Okay. Thank you. Think of the big idea. Is cos your x coordinate or your y coordinate? It's the x. So then we go to where 11 pi over 6 is, which is right here. And then cos of 11 pi over 6 would be? Square root of 3 over 2. Perfect. What is tan of 210 degrees? Connor, who are you picking? Sam already went. See, it's, that's fair. Okay, so once everybody's gone once, we'll do this one more time, and then the last person just has to pick Sam. Sounds fair? There you go. What do we got? We got tan of 210 degrees. 210. So there's 210. So we already know that tan in radians is root 3 on 3. So tan in degrees will be root 3 on 3. Right? Because the angle, whether it's in radians or degrees, is still the tan one in quadrant 3. That's why I wanted to look 
at 1 with degrees. Because if I said, what's tan of 30 degrees, you'd say root 3 on 3. Tan of 150 degrees, negative root 3 on 3. And because we've already done the special triangle, now you can do all of the pi over 3 family or all of the 60 degree family. Should be able to put all of the points on there, all of the angles and radians and degrees and tangent. And Brandon needs at least a minute head start. Well, no, it's right here. It's the next family. If you put, this is your 60 degree family. Two minute head start. What? I am recording this. It's all on there. All on YouTube. Good? Okay, two minute head start on this one. Fill it in. We are almost done, and we'll get that presentation going.